at a galaxy far, far away. There were two nerds known as Benny and Sal who had a channel known as Absolutely Marvel in DC. And they vowed to talk about the Star Wars movies and shows. And it is time to discover their thoughts on Bad Batch, episodes one through four. I thought about changing it up. What do you think? <laughs> Why not? I like it. I like it. It's very. It's got a lot of. It's got a lot of uh, gravitas. <laughs> hey guys, we're yeah. going to be talking about uh, Bad Batch episodes one through four. Uh, since I have a feeling my opinion is going to anger the comments, why don't you open with a positive opinion, Sal? <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, I um, I watched uh, those episodes uh, all in a row uh, last here. night to prepare <laughs> for this episode, and. Uh, I, I'm not the world's biggest Filoni disciple. I appreciate what he does. I think it's better than what George did. Uh, but I also, it, it would take a lot to care. You know, the the world building that, you know, Filoni has done, he's, ex, he's, he's expanded upon everything that George has done. Roger, Roger, battle droids are all stupid. Gunkins, I hate them. It's just, you know, I, I don't like any of the, the, I don't like any of the prequel stuff. But the dude knows story structure and character. And I will say, as each episode rolled forward, I cared more about the Bad Batch. Like, I cared when we less. That movie. <laughs> really? <'Cause, laughs> yeah, I, I I cared more. I actually found myself kind of rooting for Omega. Uh, I don't normally like kids in my sci-fi fantasy yeah. or really any fiction for that matter. Uh, but Omega is not insufferable like so many kids are. I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but like she's Omega not, I, is I, I agree fine. With that. Yeah. Right? Like she's when she was leaving with the family, I'm like I'm like that, you know what? That makes sense. But uh but I'll be sad to see her go. And then she didn't leave and I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> so, you know, like it was okay. Yeah. I loved the, I'm just going to call it a movie, the Bad Batch movie that kicked the movie, off the season. Yes, <laughs> yes. Because yes. I couldn't care less. I, I watched the movie, I'm like, oh, geez, here we go. Here's a bunch of stock characters. Here's the, the strong one. Here's the support. Like, no. It's but, hilarious because I loved the movie because of the oh. stock characters that were, but we got to see Order 66. We got to see the darker side of the of the Empire. We got to see all the stuff. But in that yeah. cool kind of like uh, animation of Clone Wars slash Rebels, I was, right. I was on board. Episodes two, three, and four, I found myself by four having almost no interest in it because it fell into, as you put it, the Dave Filoni cartoon like kind of thing. Yeah, it was it's a all, show. It's it was all about Omega as opposed to the Bad Batch at that point. I yeah. felt like from two, three, four, that the plot went from being about the Bad Batch to being about Omega and right. how the Bad Batch interacts and protects Omega. Yes, that it is. It is the it's the Omega show. Uh, yeah. She's going to be the best of us. It's like, oh, I got to like if they kill off the Bad Batch, it'll be to protect Omega. Yeah. And so that was actually what I disliked about two, three and four, because like I like Rebels. I don't like Rebels seasons one and two. Mm, they have their episodes, I, but the core thing I dislike about the first two seasons is it's just basically... Oh, what's the kid's name now? I can't remember his name. Ezra. Ezra. It's just about Ezra as a kid exploring the Star Wars universe, which yes. is great for its demographic, and that demographic is not me. Right. <laughs> I kind of I dug on the first uh, at least season of Rebels. I was like, oh, this is... See, this is what I wanted. I don't care about the Clone Wars era stuff. I want to see... The, the original trilogy stuff. Yeah. And, like, and I, I, I did it, like Rebels in the end. I did. Uh, and I'm yeah. debating what to do about Bad Batch. If you're going to continue watching it, then I'll continue watching it. But I found the Omega stuff, I just, I just found myself tuning out. Just right. like, okay, Omega is insisting she goes on the mission because she's a part of the Bad Batch. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> no, Rambo should be doing it. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just realized apparently today another episode drops. I'm like, oh no! <laughs> oh, I mean, our, we'll, we'll watch two for the next episode, I guess. Or, All right, we'll, fine. Or maybe we'll do a follow up with the, this episode next week. We'll figure it out. But yeah, because because apparently Jab is going to be in the next episode, and I'm like, okay. It's so, and that's the next thing I want to talk about. By episode yeah. four, I know she's a newer character, but I feel like we've already entered the realm of fan service. Oh yeah, no, it's that's that is that is like one quarter or two thirds at least of uh, of Dave Filoni's like strategy, right? It's like story structure, character, fan service. Yeah, like 
So I, I don't know. Two and three, I felt like the Bad Batch just took a backseat, and I was like, oh boy, the characters that I wanted to see more explore, these clones who are these special clones who are now like outlaws in the galaxy, and people are trying to hunt them, and yeah. meanwhile the yeah, Empire liked- is trying to work the clones in, and it's like weird. I, and- I did like the whole chain code subplot, where they're like trying to... You know, where where you see the way that the Empire starts to take hold. Like, you know that Filoni is, like, sitting there in his cowboy hat being like, oh, my God, we get to show you how the Empire in, like, only 15 years or whatever becomes this total infrastructure for multiple worlds. And yeah. so, we, you know, we get the hologram of the dude who's like, you got to chain codes, you got to give me your old credits, we'll give you new credits, this is what it does. And people are getting really excited because they're like, the war's over, like you're showing all these people being fatigued from having like been dealing with the war. And now they're like, I don't care who's in charge as long as it's over. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, that's kind of cool. But uh, but the idea of the chain codes be, I don't even know what a chain code is, honestly, but they're like, you need it in order to get on the ship. And, uh, and, and like, how they broke in and stole them and and, and repro. I'm like, eh, this is okay. Like it was, there was no moment where I was checking my phone, and that I think is a good testament for a show right now. Is like, see, that's I'm, what I was checking. I'm out. not, I'm not bored or checked out, right? Because there are yeah. so many shows I've been watching or movies, uh, like Army of the Dead, where I'm like, yeah, that's that's really that's really interesting. I I know I'm pseudo movie. checked out when I'm researching actors and actresses from the movie in <laughs> during watching it. Yes. Like, I can't wait for it to finish. I'm just like, oh, so let's get a little more information about... Oh, yeah. Zack Snyder's doing uh, prequels, Natalie. Uh, we're halfway yeah. through this one. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 at the core of it, if this is all we have for Star Wars right now, I think I'm fine watching it. Sure. But if it was something where it's like, pick Mandalorian or Bad Batch, I'd be like, Mandalorian <laughs> any day. Like, <laughs> And it's the same shit. By the way, like, Mandalorian and this... Same guy, right? Like, and same fan service to the point where episode four, What's a Mandalorian name? character shows up. What is her name? Oh, Ming Na Wen. Uh, yeah, now, okay. when it comes to her character name, I don't know. Fennec Shand. Fennec. That was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, the, it, the whole episode is about her and Ome- her and Mega and Rambo running from her. I'll never learn yes. his real name. He is always going to be Rambo to me. Rambo. <laughs> yeah, Skullface. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But, I, uh, I don't know. But I yeah. found myself every time Omega was doing the usual kid TV show stuff. Take yeah. me with you. I'm a part of the Bad Batch. Like, yes. I would be like, oh, all right, we're doing this. You know, but at the same time, I was really touched when they were like, we got you a room. And she right. was like, yeah, I've me never too. had a room. I'm like, oh, Omega. <laughs> and, then and then she's like, but I have to go with you. Oh, Omega. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the window dressing and like and and little character moments like uh, like the fact they have a gonk droid, uh, Omega sleeping on him, and like I, I don't know. I just I was like, this is kind of cute, you know. Like I'm I'm kind of liking this. I'm liking seeing people living in the Star Wars universe. But like you said, if it's a choice between Mando and Bad Batch, forget it. I mean, like, honestly, if we didn't do this show, I never would have even watched an episode because I'm just I haven't watched Clone Wars. I've watched like two episodes of that show, and I'm like, nah, I don't really care. Like I don't care. I, I get it, and I know it's like wonderful and transcendental, yeah. and it's amazing, and it you know it tells you all the stories about these clones, which I couldn't care less about, and I don't want to watch. Um, but I hear you. Like you know, it's a good show. My, I have a I have a dude who's older than me, who's a die in the wool Star Wars fan, who hardcore hates the prequels, and is like, "You've got to watch Clone Wars." And I'm like, "Dude, I hear you. I would never watch Bad Batch." But having watched the first movie slash four episodes, uh, I, I I I appreciate it's not totally stupid. You know, yeah, like, it could I'll be the, it could be like that Jurassic World cartoon show, which is horrible i heard it uh, is also, do you know there's also the fast and the furious cartoon show where they are just no, superheroes that sucks <laughs> it's on netflix you should look it up sometime <laughs> i will look at it i will look at it uh, or, or any marvel cartoon made in the last 10 years oh yeah yeah well i mean so i think the problem that i have with this and i have the problem with a lot of cartoons like the cartoons are geared for a younger demographic which is why i Naturally. think i get lost in them which is why i think right. a lot of like older guys like you and me we try to get into things like anime, but we, we have that disconnect because we grew up with cartoons are for kids. So I feel right. like sitting down and watching Bad Batch, my brain immediately goes to 
oh, there's Omega. Here's the kid stuff that I'm not going to care about. What's going on <laughs> on Twitter? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I think yeah, I hear what you I hear what you mean. I know what you mean. But even then, like that stuff, it, it feels like there is still a formula. It still it feels like yeah. it's writing for a TV show. Like here's the part where we have to have the ride along child character. Here's where the child character runs off, and the char- and the and the adult characters tell them that you know they need they can't run off. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of that stuff in there. But at the very least. They don't waste a lot of time on it, and it's not ham-fisted. Like, it could be worse. Like, I've seen that plot of, like, the kid joins the heroes, the kid wanders off, the kid pays consequences, the hero saves the kid. I've seen it in He-Man, yep. I've seen it in Thundercats, I've seen it in Batman the Animated Series, like, I've seen it in every show. Batman the Animated Series, amazing show. That, you know, like you said, we watched kid, we watched cartoons as kids. Those cartoons, though, like there are some cartoons where it's like you have changed the game, you have shifted the paradigm, and now suddenly, I'm I'm into cartoons as an adult. Or there are cartoons that are made for everybody: the Tick yep. cartoon, Batman the Animated Series, Freakazoid, Spider Man, yep. all that stuff. But uh, but with this, the show is at least competently made by professionals who are like who know, you know, like there's no way they're what you know the people making Bad Batch aren't like so. The average age of our audience is probably 27. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, it's not 10. It, you know, it's it's definitely adults. Well, I, so, feel like, I feel like that's why the Bad Batch are kind of grizzled the way they are, and Omega's yes. there. I think it's intended yes. to be like, w- okay, we're going to aim for kids, but we're going to have yep. the adults there for the adults so you can watch it with your kids. I think that was the demographic. Right. Well, and, and I think, uh, what is it, Clone Wars, there are no kid characters, right? Like, the main characters are Obi-Wan and Anakin. So yeah, yeah. this is the first time they're doing that. So for all we know... Well, they had Ahsoka. They could be making a show where it's like, you grew up watching Clone Wars, here's the show for your family. Well, they had Ahsoka in Clone Wars. She started young. Like oh, yeah, 15, that's right, 16. she did. But she grew up, too. Yeah. So well, maybe, I think, But I maybe, think that's why we all like her. They made her an insufferable child all the way to, like, this is a competent Jedi where we're all like, Ahsoka! <laughs> yes, everybody, I remember everybody hated Ahsoka when she first showed up. I was just kind of like, does that line up? Maybe they're trying <laughs> like, that again with from, Omega, just making her a little less insufferable at the beginning. Yeah, she <laughs> is. She. I, I think she's really kind of, like, fun and cute. Yeah. Uh, and who knows, maybe, like, episode six, it'll be like, five-year time jump. I also want to comment. I, I I know we mentioned this before, but I just try, she's a clone, and I get you could just make a clone a female. We've experienced that in, in Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. Why does this clone have an Australian accent? <laughs> right. Well, is it or is it a Kiwi accent? Like, uh, is she? It's not what the rest of the clones speak. <laughs> Let's go no. with that. <laughs> well, it's maybe if hers is, is <laughs> if she's just a clone, that means she grew up in the cloning facility. So who there had an Australian slash Kiwi well, accent? <laughs> see, here's the thing that drives me crazy. Don't don't pull that thread because my problem is, like, cl- accents are not genetic. Yeah, yeah. Like, when they're born, they have to learn to sound like that. I mean, so, Dan grew up in England, and he has no British accent because right he grew he pretty much learned all of his like speech. Th- I don't from know. Americans. From Americans, right. So that's yeah, why. No. In but theory, his parents are clones, both English. Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the clones should sound like Lama Sue. They should be like, hey, everybody. Yeah. We're going to move our right flank now. Because that's who raised them is those Lama people. <laughs> the Kaminoians. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the subplot, by the way, just really quick about how they're transitioning. They're like... Lucas didn't dub all the clone, uh, all the stormtroopers in the special edition with Tamora Morrison, so we have to explain why the stormtroopers in the original trilogy aren't clones, and so, and they've done it before, and they've they they've they've already established that in the expanded universe, but like since that's all garbage, we got to retell it, and we got Filoni, so he's doing this whole thing where it's like Tarkin's not a big fan. And it's really because Tarkin's a racist and doesn't like aliens, but he's he also doesn't trust clones because they're made by aliens. And so he's like all in on ideas like the new guy who is like, let's get people who enlist. And then you get the team and and uh, and, and, and establishing this whole like new order for the Empire where it's like, no, we're going to curry the good favor we got from ending the war and getting st- structure in place. By getting volunteers to become stormtroopers, and I'm like, yeah. that's cool. That's cool. He's like, he's 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 I know, explaining I like that plot. it. 
where the the sniper yeah, right? guy Tech, I think his name was, or whoever tech, that guy. I think. No, not, no yeah. Tech is on the team. The, but anyway, yeah, Tech's the Tech guy. Yeah, the sniper guy joined up with them, and he was like, "I'm a good soldier." Like yeah. every time he says that, it's so creepy. Good he is. He was a total creep. Orders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, man. They, I know we said this in the last episode, but they got to stop make, trying to make Saul Guerrero a thing. <laughs> like, um, stop I also putting Saul Guerrero real in quick there. on. Just because you mentioned this earlier, how everyone says to watch Clone Wars, and they've told me the same thing. Of course. And I one thing I've noticed at Clone Wars, and this also applies to Avatar, this also applies to a lot of those shows from back in the day, and even shows nowadays. I hate shows where it's always like, no, no, if you get to season three, one and oh. two make total sense, and it's going to be great. And I'm like, yeah. so you want me to devote two seasons of a show during an era when shows did 20 something episodes right. plot or not they did it like yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like we had a comment in our modoc episode where they said uh isn't the rule of thumb that you got to watch three episodes before you decide you don't like it and i'm like who has that kind of time <laughs> not this day and age like like if yeah, i don't like with modoc with- i did not like episode one it did, and nothing about episode one redeemed it for me yeah. why am i gonna watch two more of this show <laughs> right like Especially when the when, audience here wants me to finish Jupiter Legacy. We're trying to catch yeah. up on Bad Batch. I'm trying to watch Superman over on HBO. I'm trying to watch Flash. I'm also trying because I watch every sitcom known to mankind from the Connors to the Goldbergs. Like I just I have always loved classic sitcoms, so I've always yeah. watched them. <laughs> Maybe back when there were four good shows across 300 channels, you could devote three episodes yeah. to a show you think sucks. But in a world where there are Three good streaming services and five more of those plus cable plus YouTube. Did plus you know Paramount Twitch. Plus is a thing? Yes, I do. I do. And Rugrats rebooted on it. I I saw it trending and I'm like, I don't even care. <laughs> like I didn't even look into it. No, but it's actually funny because I think um streaming services are catching on to we've stopped watching the first three because that yeah. used to be the rule of thumb and th- this does pertain to Bad Batch don't worry we're bringing this back around because we're discussing right. Bad Batch yeah yeah the, use- the rule of thumb used to be watch the first three I remember a great example of that is Magicka Madoka which is an anime oh, from back yes. in the day but if yeah. you quit out in episodes one and two you're like this is a crappy Sailor Moon yeah, but you if won't you get, get to three <laughs> the game is changed there like, is yeah that show is kind of amazing because there's like an algorithm to it. Cause like my wife, Tiffany watched that show. Uh, she was like, I hear I should watch the show. She was watching it and I hear it going on in the background while I'm doing other things. And so I sat down with her and I'm like, all right, what is this? So we're watching it and it's short. Cause it, you know, it's, it's like boom, 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 boom. Get to the th- second episode. I'm like, I think I'm good. And, uh, we watched the third episode and that's where the turn happens. It's like, literally you're like, okay, I think I, I think I know where this show is going. Yeah. Third episode, boom, complete heel shift. That's not a rule. That's not an algorithm that like Western TV shows take. The Bad Batch doesn't get good at three. Modoc doesn't get good at three. If you saw one, you'll get three. Like it's, it's the same. Right. Well, um, what I was getting at the Bad Batch is, did you notice they did a movie at first? They completely oh, told you what they were going to like. So if you were just like, I'm watching one. Well, one is an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're not going to get you. We're not going to try to get you with a cliffhanger. We're going to get you no. in episode one. And I think a lot of shows need to start doing that. Cause if yeah. we're going to watch episode, like if Modoc was like, here's an hour episode. I, I don't know if I'd finish it with how bad that fir- that first episode was, but right. maybe I would have, and maybe I could have been a little more informed in the later episodes, but yes, it's it's interesting the world the way the world is shifting because Bad Batch is an hour long, you know? Yeah. Jupiter's yeah. Legacy did it the old way, and I'm interested now at episode seven. Seven. Ugh, yeah. Sal at seven, that one started right. to get good. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not that that's not the hallmark of a good show. Is well, you gotta slog through the first half of the show or the first two thirds, but trust me, those last three are really good and they yeah. inf- they make they make the first seven worth it. Like, no. Oh, well, and that's my problem with like Clone Wars and even even Rebels has the same issue, and so yeah. does Avatar. Where yeah. like I watched Avatar. I watched Avatar first three seasons because everyone told me it's amazing, get to season three. Yeah. I got to season three and I was not like, oh my god, that shift. You know, yeah. like it, the shift for me was like the, the the end of the first season. Like the first, like the first season of Avatar: The Last Airbender is like, 
is it, it's more or less a kid's show, but I think it's more like this, where it's like it's it is it is obviously for children, but it's not written stupid. It's not made to be like just put on in the background for you to be an absentee parent. Although if you, I could think of worse things to put on in the background if you're an absentee parent, uh, but. When we get to the season finale of episode of season one of Avatar, when like the stakes are have never been higher, there is death, there is destruction, like, and you know these characters, you care about them, and you see them put in real danger. Like that's when you're like, wait a minute, whoa! And then season two, the danger is more subtle, and the villains are more complex. Like the first one is like a kids show, black and white. Second season, you're like, oh, it gets more complicated. And by the third one, you're like, give me whatever you got. <laughs> right, but but you got hooked in in that first season. I, I just I saw did get a lot of first season. kind of children's cartoon stuff that I think if I had watched in that era would have worked for me. And I, I, like I think the, same the problem, problem is people just told you it was too good. Like people were just oh, like, yeah, you gotta, gotta watch it. I was I waiting for much. that big like, oh my god, this was the amazing sh- shift. But I feel like yeah. that's part of the problem with Clone Wars. Clone Wars dropped also when I was in Iraq. Also, when I wasn't, you know, free to watch a lot of these things. Exactly. So I come back home and it's like, here's three seasons of this show and I'm like, Three seasons of a kid's show? I'm good. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, especially if, like, you turn it on and the first thing you see are, like, Roger, Roger, Herp a Derp, and it's like, oh, my God, more of this. <laughs> more of this. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I, I think Bad Batch, if I had wa- – so if Bad Batch came out with the fir- with two, three, and four first, mm-hmm. for whatever the reason, they just skipped the opening plot, I don't think, I right. would, I don't think I'd be willing to stick it out. No. But the tonal shift from one to two to three to four, I'm willing to stick it out if you're going to keep watching it so we can keep making these episodes. If yeah, I was alone, I think I'd be there. <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll probably watch it. I like, I like it. I don't love it. I'm not like, oh, it's not like Mandalorian where I'm like, we have to do it because I'm going to be watching it. Uh, but right, it's just right. more like, this, is, this was not a slog, uh, especially because I was able to go like, oh, the fight scene, skip, 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 skip. <laughs> because <laughs> not not that i don't care but like sometimes i'm like i know what this is and i know this is for the fun but like sometimes you don't need that and then sometimes like there were a lot of moments where i'm like what and then i went back and i'm like oh okay the fight scene was literally only 20 seconds <laughs> i guess i'll watch the whole thing <laughs> i guess i'll um, watch the whole fight sequence yeah that was but, a lot uh, of the fedex stuff when she was chasing oh it was my like god 20 seconds all right hide amiga how are you doing <laughs> yeah yeah i will say you know a- a- apropos of cornered that episode uh i i love swoop bikes i don't know what it is but i've always loved swoop bikes and so you put a swoop bike in the episode i'm sold right i'm in it was just I can't great find a listing of the episodes but i do think it only goes like eight or nine i don't think they're doing yeah. anything crazy yeah, I, I am right. happy in general that shows are now starting to do these quicker seasons because one, mm-hmm. I can watch more shows. Two, uh, it's the story's still tighter. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad it's not sp- uh, 16 episodes. 16? Okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, maybe it'll be good. We're only at four. Yeah, that's true. If it's 16, I think there's no way Omega is not going to be growing up. We'll see. We'll see. But okay, well, we'll uh, if you catch this next week, then you know we continue to watch it, guys. Uh, right. <laughs> thank you so much for enjoying this. Let us know your opinions down below uh, about this show. It's I'm, I'm indifferent. Sal's enjoying right. the heck out of it, so we'll see. Thank yeah. you guys so much for watching this episode of Absolutely Marvel in DC. We will see you next time right here at the channel. If you want to support it, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and we'll be around real soon.